Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Flags and Foods. I am Mr. Flag and I'm excited to take you through a journey of Flags and Foods. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our subscribers who have been part of our journey so far. As you would have seen in the last two episodes, Flags and Foods is a unique travel and food concept. You can get further details of our show in the description box below. So we once again welcome all avid travelers and passionate foodies to our show. Now let us say hello to the other half of the Flags and Foods team, Mr. and Mrs. Food. Salom. 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 Uh, I know at least two countries which use Salom as a greeting. Let's see which of these countries is the one for today. As routine, let me introduce a country through three quirky facts. Clue number one. It is one of the only two countries in the world which is double landlocked, which effectively means that not only is this country landlocked, but it is also surrounded by countries which are landlocked. So going for a swim in the ocean will be quite a lengthy adventure from here. Clue number two. This country was home to one of the most illustrious of horse breeds, the heavenly horses of Fergana. These horses were known to sweat blood which further enhanced its heavenly character and unfortunately these horses are extinct now. Clue number 3. The undefeated ruler Timur also known as Tamerlin was born in this country. His empire stretched from Turkey all the way up to India and was based out of Central Asia. Viewers, the country is Uzbekistan, perhaps the most prominent destination on the legendary Silk Route. Its architectural marvels are a sight to behold. I visited Uzbekistan in 2017 as part of the Silk Road Itinerary. Uzbekistan is located in Central Asia and it has a rich and varied cultural heritage stemming from the various empires which it has been part of. The country has come under the rule of legendary emperors like Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Timur, and has also been part of the Persian Empire, the Caliphates, the Seljuk Turks and finally the Soviet Union from which it became independent in 1991. Uzbekistan Top 5 Places to Visit 1. Samarkand No name is as symbolic of the Silk Route as Samarkand. This UNESCO World Heritage listed site is known as Crossroads of Culture as it conjures up images of a mythical ancient time. 2. Bukhara Known as Central Asia's holiest city, this UNESCO World Heritage listed site has been an important base for Islamic theology and science for several centuries. 3. Kiva Yet another UNESCO World Heritage listed site, Kiva completes the trilogy of Silk Road gems along with Samarkand and Bukhara. Its main attraction, Ichin Kala, which literally translates as the inner part of the old city, is surrounded by thick mud walls and has an open-air museum vibe. 4. Tashkent Tashkent is the capital of Uzbekistan and the largest city in Central Asia. It is a fascinating jumble of medieval oriental architecture as well as a mix of Soviet era blocks and modern high rises. 5. Aral Sea Aral Sea to many would be a surprising inclusion, but it would cut the top 5 in my list. Once the fourth largest lake, the Aral Sea has shrunk to 10% of its former size due to diversion of water for cotton industry during Soviet times. It is considered one of the most severe man-made ecological disasters of all times. The main city of the region, Muniak, is infamous now for its ship symmetry. Today we are cooking. Sorry, sorry. Today she is cooking. That's much better. And I do the cutting, the ingredients, the tasting, the... Can editing. we introduce the food now? Okay, okay. Before introducing the dish to you, let me tell you, we are using two staples of Central Asia today. 
land and voice i know what comes to your mind right now it's not pulao pulao of course is the most famous dish of uzbekistan as well as a number of central asian countries however we wanted to cook something unique to uzbekistan which is moshkichiri let's see what ingredients we need for cooking moshkichiri today to prepare the moshkichiri we need 250 g lamb diced into very small pieces 1 cup kalros rice we can also use parboiled rice for this 1 cup moong beans otherwise known as green gram 1 cup black eyed peas this needs to be pre cooked before we add into the moshki chiri 1 onion diced into medium size pieces 2 cloves of garlic finely chopped 2 tablespoon of diced tomatoes 1 carrot grated 1 and 1/2 to 2 teaspoon of salt half teaspoon of black pepper 3/4 teaspoon of cumin and finally oil to start heat a cooking pot and pour the oil add the diced pieces of lamb and brown the meat for about 10 minutes add the onions and saute till the onions are a golden color now add the garlic stir in the carrots and saute for about 3 to 4 minutes add the tomato and stir until the tomatoes are softened now add the salt pepper and the cumin pour about 750 ml of the boiled water into the pot add the moong beans and simmer for about 20 minutes until the beans are half cooked add the rice and mix well the rice will take about 30 minutes to cook it is important to keep adding water in the pot as it is necessary to maintain the consistency of the moshkichiri and also to avoid the dish from drying out slow cooking is what lends its flavor to the moshkichiri once the rice is almost done add the pre cooked black eyed peas and let the flavors blend in the moshkichiri is ready to be savored now and tastes great with a side of caramelized onions Hello Junior Food. Hello Mr. Flag. You look different today. Did you have a soch katish? Soch ko what? It's something in us big related to your hair. You mean my new haircut? Yes, and it actually looks very nice, Junior Food. Thank you, Mr. Flag. So are you ready to taste the Uzbek cuisine? Yes. But you know the routine. You have to answer two questions. Okay, I'm up for it. Well, let's see. Can you name five of the neighbors of uzbekistan i think i know all five of them tajikistan afghanistan kyrgyzstan kazakhstan and turkmenistan wow you know your geography well junior food okay let me see the second question there is a very famous monument in india which is inspired by uzbek architecture do you know which one it is Is it the Taj Mahal? Yes. Have you been to the Taj Mahal? Yes, I have a picture of holding it. Like wow, this. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations, Junior Food. Thank you. For answering both the questions. Now let's taste the moshki chiri. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
now for the verdict. As you are aware, we have given Junior Foot three options to communicate the verdict through hand gestures. They are Okay. Yeah. And to so Junior Foot, the verdict. Wow! Amazing again. The double thumbs up. Junior Foot, thank you very much. Well, actually, I'm a bit surprised that Junior Foot has given us a double thumbs up or an amazing verdict because a lot of kids may not actually like pulses, but he seemed to have liked it. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this particular dish, it's, it's sort of a risotto blend with the right mix of uh, rice, lamb and pulses. And uh, it brings back certain memories for me. Uh, I traveled to Uzbekistan for about two weeks, about three years back. And tasting this dish right now actually took me back to my travel days in Uzbekistan when I had extensively eaten Moshkichiri every other day. Rahmat viewers for tuning into this episode of Flags and Foods. If you liked our show, please subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon. We will be back next week with another signature dish from another stunning country. Till then, happy cooking and keep your travel dreams alive. Let us talk about the entry and exit procedures into Uzbekistan. It's not very simple. It's, it's actually quite a challenge. In fact, the famous show had done a segment especially on the challenges of getting in and out of Uzbekistan. We had done a session on our bus ride into Uzbekistan from Tajikistan, which detailed on all of the procedures to get those forms filled right. Well, uh, we did get everything correct as per rules on the form, especially on the currency part, which had to be correctly documented and detailed. We reached the border point and there was a 30 minutes of no man's land in between the two borders, which we had to walk in the blazing sun. I went there in July. I reached the passport control. Everything went absolutely fine. Then I reached the customs where these forms are collected. So the people behind the customs counter, they looked at the forms and I could see it in their eyes. They were like, oh, this guy seemed to have filled everything right, especially on the currency front. Then just when I was about to leave, one of the guys called me back and said, kept pointing to one place in the form. I looked at the place. What was it? It had a column called indecent videos. Do you carry any indecent videos? Then he kept asking me for my laptop, which was in the bag. So I bought the laptop. Suddenly it stuck me. I had these videos of Game of Thrones and Spartacus and series like that saved on the laptop for viewing on my trips. And you know, these videos were not exactly, you know, cater to the terms of being decent, which is as per the form. So I was like a bit scared. I thought, my God, this is going to be trouble. And I gave them my laptop. They opened it up and they pointed at one particular movie. I was just praying it's not a GOT or a Spartacus uh, movie. And it was actually a regional Indian movie called Anarkali. Now, probably they chose that because Anarkali is a female name and they're used to seeing Bollywood movies and, you know, Anarkali of Mughal Asm fame. And I opened the movie and we watched it together for about five to ten minutes. I don't know. I have a clue what they understood. Anyway, by that time, my group was coming out and they waved me off. So I, on the corner of my eye, I, I was looking and there was only one other person from my group whom they hauled up, which was my tour guide who was from the region, who was from Central Asia and does this trip almost every two weeks or so. And she was emptying her whole bag and she was get, got, got hauled up along with me. Uh, well, the rest of my group was all Western tourists. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that this was a case of racial profiling. Uh, it's quite irritating as uh, always, but you know, it can also bring about funny travel stories like the one that I just had. So until next time, goodbye. <laughs>